Hello, and welcome to this CUBE conversation where we are wrapping up two weeks of data platform coverage. Today, I'm joined by two data platform experts, and I couldn't be more excited. I have Venkat Rajaji, Senior Vice President of Product Management at Cloudera, and CUBE alum that feels like I was just with him yesterday, Sanjeev Mohan, Principal at Sanjmo. Uh, you know, Welcome to the show, guys. I, I think it's been just an incredible couple of weeks, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, you know, expect to have two better people to have on here to really break down what's been going on. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have to say, Rob, after two weeks of what I've seen, it amazes me to see how even like big companies like Cloudera, Google. Snowflake, Databricks, obviously, Microsoft with Fabric, IBM, they're all innovating at the speed of, of a startup. And the amount of innovation that's coming out is going to completely reshape the way we, we today do our analytics, the way we think through this whole uh, process end to end, it's going to, be, it's going to look very different, in my opinion. Oh, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think this has been, I, it's one of the most exciting times I've ever yeah. seen in the data industry in general. And, and I mean, if you think about it, it's been a way busy couple of weeks. I mean, from a data management, data market perspective, when you look at these data platforms, you have Databricks, uh, you know, acquiring Tabular, who is really kind of the, the forefront of Iceberg, Apache uh, Iceberg. Then you have the open sourcing by Snowflake of Polaris and of Unity by Databricks, of their catalogs. I, I, th I think this really is just setting the table uh, for the future. But let's bring Venkat in on this. What, what do you see from these activities that have been going on in this industry around you? What, what really is your take on the future? And what does it mean, not only for Cloudera, but for customers in general? Sure, uh, so thanks, Rob. Um, I think the the thing is that it's it's been a constant stream of news, no doubt about it. And um, I think it's more reason to discuss kind of Cloudera's history and our leadership in the market. I think the first thing that I would observe is that this is actually a validation of our strategy. We kind of moved into the the the, the iceberg way about two years ago, back in 2022. We kind of put our foot in the door there, and and all of our engines are now supporting iceberg, which I think is a validation of the strategy. When you see what what's kind of been happening in the marketplace. I think the second thing I would I would mention is, you know, with 25 plus exabytes of data under management with, with Cloudera, we're really the only true hybrid open data lake house that brings analytics and AI to the business data. And, and I think where we're kind of evolving and where we've kind of been moving over the last number of years is we provide the foundation for building and deploying AI applications, including chatbots, document summarization, and code generation. And we've kind of gone further into that space. Last week, we announced the acquisition of Virtus Operational AI Platform, and it really marks a major step forward in our path to deliver on the promise of enterprise AI. And I think what's important here is our decision to make the strategic acquisition isn't just about growth, it's about delivering an enriched AI experience to our customers and anticipating their needs since the future of data management is AI. I mean, so you kind of heard Sanjeev at the very top talking a little bit about this. Data is the foundation for AI and AI applications and where the market's headed. So I, I feel really excited about kind of all of these news. I think uh, it's interesting, it's, it, it, but it, it's a validation of our strategy and something that I'm very, very excited about actually. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that again, when you start to look at, I think it's a win for customers and organizations. I got to talk to a lot of different organizations over the last couple of weeks. And I would say that one of the things that they're looking for is, you know, they, they don't want to worry about the data. They don't want to worry about what, what format it's in or what have you. Uh, they like the open standards because, you know, again, it, it's from a lock-in perspective, it really helps out. Uh, you know, what are, what are the really the, the problems that Cloudera is focused on solving right now for these enterprises? Yeah, so, you know, large global companies, they're really struggling with how to use all of their data to help them run their businesses better. And with more data than ever before and new data sources emerging daily, organizations, they have these, these critical information. It's dispersed in silos across the business, right? And they can't really trust or derive accurate insights from this in a really timely manner. 
So solving these challenges is essential for unleashing the transformative power of the most in-demand technologies. So things like analytics, machine learning, generative AI, and whatever probably comes next. And so where really Cloudera comes into play is we can bring this all together, kind of unify this across the entirety of the data estate and really help customers take back control of their data, analytics, and AI with a unified platform built on openness, open technologies, and open source in particular. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I mean, Sanjeev, I mean, again, you know, we were uh, sequestered and then talking to a lot of different organizations over the course. Yeah. It, it seems like this, that rings true with me. What about with you? Yeah, completely. Uh, the the fact that Cloudera has over 25 exabytes of data itself is a very impressive feat. The, but, but the point that, that comes to my mind is that this a lot of this is mission critical data and it's spread all over it's in various different cloud providers, on premises, it's in batch mode, it's streaming, it's structured, it's unstructured, expecting clients to take their data and move it into wherever AI is running is, is, or is not going to happen. It's not practical because of the cost, the time, and the security risk of, of moving this data. So what, what I'm starting to see is that the pendulum has shifted once again. In modern data stack, we had a proliferation of tools. Each tool had its own metadata, by the way, and they were all talking to each other. What I'm now seeing is that customers are saying, uh, to your point earlier, they don't want to think too much about data. They want simplification and they want some sort of an integration, but they want it with interoperability. They want the ability to bring any compute engine that they may have, any processing engine. Uh, one department may say that we are SQL experts. Another one may say we are Pandas experts or, or, or uh, PySpark. And then another one may say we want to build conversational uh, products that can uh, leverage LLMs. All of this should should really act upon the data using some open standards. This is the reason why iceberg has now risen to be one of the hottest topics. In my opinion, whoever has the control over the metadata has the keys to the kingdom. And metadata is used not just for for interoperability of our reports, dashboards, and traditional analytics, but but we also rely on metadata to help improve accuracy, reduce hallucinations of our LLMs. So, so metadata is really providing the context of all this massive wealth of data that we have collected over the past few decades. Yeah, that, totally, and I, I think that to me is really the key as we get into these data apps and data products and you, you have to, have, the metadata really is the underlying, uh, I guess, source of truth and the, how you build that out yeah. is super important. But, uh, you know, Vincat, what really, I guess you could say, differentiates Cloudera's approach compared to other data platforms on the market? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of, Hitting on what Sanjeev said, you know, one of the things we talk a lot about in this industry are uh, uh, engines and applications that that create data and, and produce data and then engines and applications that consume data, which is really you think about um, business intelligence, you think about AI applications, you think about applications that are using that data, right? But there's this piece in the middle that we rarely talk about, which is the processing of that data, right? And so you have to think about the data kind of comes in, we kind of process that data, and then it's used up um, for, for analytics purposes. And so kind of to Sanjeev's point, right, the metadata and the processing of that data is actually fundamental and it's critical to the success of the consumption of that data, right? And so really when I think about where Cloudera sits, we kind of play far more on the, the processing of that data and the consumption of that data. And, and that's really where we can help customers to kind of orchestrate their entire data estate across the enterprise. And so what, what I think that what's, what, how customers should think about Cloudera is really, we're that neutral party that can manage and specifically given the news of this last week that manages iceberg, iceberg data, iceberg tables without vendor lock-in and at scale. And we do it in all clouds as well as doing it on premises. So really truly hybrid, right? And we were kind of a first mover in adopting Iceberg as the central and native format for our data, our analytics, and our AI platform. And I think what that does is it reinforces our credibility as the best vendor to work with when you want managed Iceberg data estates at scale across all clouds and on-premises. 
And I think Iceberg has, it continues to be uh, central to our open data lake house, that cloud era architecture and, and across, and I think this is the important part, hybrid clouds, multi-clouds, et cetera. So I think the acquisition of tabular, so what we've seen with uh, Polaris and, and et cetera, I think it, it it signals that Iceberg is the de facto standard. It will it has become it will remain and it is the de facto standard for large scale data and analytics deployments for the long run. And and the beauty is we've been at this for for many years now. We've actually kind of we were kind of one of the first movers in the Iceberg space. And and I think um, you know because of that that innovation and kind of what we've done the twenty five exabytes of data and the fact that we're truly hybrid. That's really how we start to really differentiate in the marketplace. And I think Cloudera also counts. Many of these large uh, organizations that directly contribute to the projects, there are customers as well. And really, that's truly when we talk about open and open source, that's really what we're talking about. Yeah, we had yeah, we had a long conversation about that yesterday, about you know what percentage of contributions are coming from one company versus another company. Uh, but Sanjeev, how, how are you seeing this as well? I, I mean, I, I know we've talked about it a bit this week, but you know, again, I, I think it's worth uh, reiterating i i see i completely agree with what uh, venkat says uh in fact i had written my blog on snowflake summit after i attended that and just before a database summit started in that i said people want uh, want an integrated solution with interoperability so i said that in the beginning at the very end in the last paragraph i say yes but without vendor lock-in and uh, in fact, even when you look at what came out of Databricks, it's very interesting. Databricks native table format is not iceberg, it's Delta. But every time they write to Delta with a very minor overhead of we heard two to four percent, they actually create an iceberg uh, manifest file. So basically, all of Delta is now available as iceberg. So any tool, any compute that that supports iceberg. Uh, can natively start working on a different table format. So we see the uh, there's a lot of this this cross pollination happening, uh, and I, I I think this is great for customers because they have choices, but at the same time they don't they're not locked in to one format or the other. Yeah, I I think that's the key. I mean, I, I think that will be the number one you know line item when people are looking at what platform they're going with is. It, I, I need it to be in an open format. I need it to have Iceberg support. And how do you support Iceberg? And are you contributing back? And all of that good stuff is going to go into and definitely be, you know, one of the key uh, pieces. But Venkat, you, you kind of brought it up a little bit. So let's kind of dive in a little bit on the fact that Cloudera did make an acquisition last, ne last week of uh, Verta's platform. How is that really going to help you enable uh, organizations to really enrich the AI experiences that they're they're trying to build out and really you know going down that AI path. Yeah, absolutely. So we're very excited about this. Uh, Verta was a pioneer in model management, serving, and governance for predictive and generative AI. And so the company's hybrid and multi-cloud end-to-end AI platform is going to fuel our ability to serve the growing AI demand today and tomorrow. And so the, 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 the synergy is really nice philosophically. They align with kind of how we do things. Um, so the Verta team is joining Cloudera's machine learning group, reporting to our chief product officer, Deepto Chakravarti. And with the addition of Verta's world-renowned talent and technology, we'll be able to accelerate our promise to turn AI hype into reality for every organization. So really, really excited about this. Some of the capabilities that we have really accelerate our roadmap as well. So really excited about that. Yeah, I, I think and that was what I think Sanjeev was even talking about. Again, it's you know bringing the AI to the data, not the data to the AI, because yeah. that, yeah. that, that's yeah. craziness. <laughs> And one thing that I, I want to ask uh, Venkat is, can Verta acquisition help me abstract the complexities of AI? Like, I want to do RAG, but I don't want to be writing massive lines of codes. Absolutely. So that, that's really the promise, actually, of, of both Verta and Cloudera and kind of bringing that together is we really want to enable and bring together kind of a, a low-code, no-code AI application development platform. And really, that's what some of the capabilities that we get with Verta are specifically. So when you think about um, 
when you think about AI and the AI application development lifecycle, it's it's not terribly different than the regular application development lifecycle or what we talk about with data ops. There is an emerging infinity, as I will call it, for AI application development for that CI CD process. So you think about things like model monitoring, drift, and being able to change and and mo uh, and and uh, you know modify your code, your application based and the model itself based on 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 this type of information. And also having kind of what I'll call low code, no code application development platform for building out rapidly building out applications for AI in particular. So this is this is really the promise. And this is what we're going to be delivering as part of the Verda acquisition within our machine learning group. Yeah, and it would seem to be a good fit from a, you know, overall overarching perspective as well. And is, is that really where it fits from a data and AI strategy perspective within Cloudera? Yeah, so, so think about this. We have, uh, and I think to Sanjeev's point, this is totally spot on, right? When you have the data estate, the volumes that we have, the 25 exabytes of data under management, um, what customers really need is they need to bring not only, the, we've talked about bring compute to the data, you have to bring AI to the data as well, right? And so this is part of that. And so their philosophy fits very, very nicely with our philosophy, which is the data management, uh, managing the data, which is critical. And so you talk, and Sanjeev talked about leveraging metadata as a means to building out the RAG, right? For, for retrieval augmentation purposes. It gives you more context for the actual, for, for not the model, but for, for, the, for the prompt that you get, right? And so this is all part of that strategy is actually bringing AI to the data, management of the data, and being able to get insights from the data and leverage the data for predictive purposes and for um, you know to to really kind of reduce the time to value for customers in terms of getting a reduction of of of, of you know redundant process based work and things like that. Yeah, no, I that that is uh, key. I mean, we see it and we partner up with the company ETR and we see it in the data that people are trying to figure out how to get to production. And without tooling like this on top of the data and close to the data and being able to move and manage the models. And I, I think, again, you know, uh, it, it's one of those things that I think people forgot there's a flywheel with that and everybody was just looking at the largest models. But it's going to be many models and you're going to have to manage them. You're going to have to deal with drift and things of that nature. So I think this has been great. Any uh, last words from the two of you? I'll let Sanjeev. No, I, I think this is, I, I'm, I'll be repeating myself by saying that uh, I, the landscape is, is going to uh, change uh, significantly. In fact, I think a lot of ecosystem partners that provide very point solutions are, are, are now going back to the drawing board after these two weeks of conferences and trying to see how do they differentiate themselves because these large companies providers are really innovating super fast. I think Rob, the, what, what I would add are probably just a few points. I think the first thing is that uh, from the news of the last couple of weeks, customers win. Customers are the winners of this news because now there's a standard, a de facto standard by which I think most data is going to settle on, which is going to be iceberg, which means all of the engines will now become interoperable. You can centralize that data across with a, with the iceberg as as the as the management mechanism across the entire data estate. This may this means customers win. They don't have lock in. They have choice of the different engines. So I think that's number one. Customers are the big winners. I think number two. What I'm excited about personally is that this has been a complete validation of the Cloudera strategy. The Cloudera strategy was really around leveraging iceberg as the table format of choice. That, that was really going to gain dominance. And, you know, we were first to market all of our engines support uh, Iceberg today, as well as the format for reading and writing in, in particular. And so we've kind of already been at this game for some time now. And I think we're, we're, we're at that first to market in, in some ways that I, that I think can really help as customers think about their modern data architecture, their lake house based architecture. I think this is a, a, a true validation of the, uh, of the Cloudera strategy. And I think the third piece of, that I'd say, and I'm kind of repeating myself, is that you know, as we think about uh, generative AI and we think about AI in particular, it starts with the data and it starts with the management of the data and the metadata in particular to gain value and insights to actually augment some of those retrieve, uh, uh, augment the, the, the models in particular for getting maximum purpose out of that data and, and really bringing AI 
to where the data actually is. And I think as, as a result of the centralization around Iceberg, customers win and they can bring AI directly to the data. I, I, I think those are three super important points and I, I can't disagree with any of them to put it mildly. I think the organizations win and I, I think that's a great place for us to you know leave it. Thank you both for coming on board. Uh, I know, you know, early, late, wherever we are in, uh, you know, this, this very busy time, but uh, thanks for coming on board. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ajit. Thank and you. thank you for watching this CUBE conversation here on The Cube, the leader in tech news and analysis. Stay tuned for more around data platforms. More to come.